Let's pay for the bus. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to show you guys an update on the car is sitting currently before we start it up. Uh, as you guys saw in the last video, we're waiting on a couple fittings and stuff. Wanted to show you guys all the fittings that we've been getting. First off, before we start this video, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Super Bioless Bi on Instagram. He's got that red Super that they're building the motor with all the ARP hardware. And uh, we've been going back and forth, kind of joking around on Messenger about the ARP hardware. And he goes, hey man, I got you something that I know you haven't gotten, and is this bolt right here and that's actually bothering me for the for the this is the tensioner for the serpentine belt, and this is actually the bolt for there. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that out, man, and that's it's gonna look real nice to get that black bolt out of there. Uh, so that's that's the first thing, guys. I wanted to show you guys uh, these fittings back here for the for the valve covers. These are. Uh, Platinum Racing product uh, valve covers, which is I believe they're the same as a uh, Hypertune So the the holes on here are 12 n I got these adapters um, My cash can is a 10 So I got these adapters from you know 12 ORB to a 10 And this was my initial plan to go with a with a 12 and just do like a 90 on top that way I'm gonna do this one hand, it's hard. All right, so, all right, that's like screwed all the way to the bottom, even if the O-ring's on there. Guys, that, that thing, it, to me, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, I just, I wasn't happy with the look, so I went ahead and I ordered these. Um, I found them on eBay. They're, I believe they come from Australia. And it's a, uh, it's a much nicer, uh, you know, uh, like a free-flowing little round 90. And it's a 12 ORB on, on the bottom part, and it, it already merged into a 90. So I wanted to go ahead and you know, witness with you guys first. I haven't tried them on yet. This is kind of just, you know, I ordered and going along with it. So... Oh, yeah. You guys be the judge. Look at that. It's a lot nicer and a lot sleeker than that, you know, square 90 looking uh, fitting up here. So these we could actually run back here. So the whole, the, you know, the, the holes to the catch can actually run around the back. And I'm not too concerned about that. But yeah, that's, this is uh, the kind of like the, the height that I was looking for, not, not this. This is kind of sticks out too much. So that's another plus that. That took a while to get here, probably like a good four weeks. So I'm glad I got that. And then these 90s for the radiator, I didn't think they were gonna be that big to be honest. So um, so I'm gonna be kind of experimenting with these. All right guys, so I try to get a decent angle here with the GoPro. Work with me here, I'm trying to do this myself here. This will sit back here. Oh. And it's pretty close, but I don't think that's gonna work for me. This is not the look I wanted, guys. Um, it's too big. I actually like the, you know, I like the bigger, I like, uh, I want a longer piece of the holes showing. This for me is kind of like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't flow. It doesn't flow well. I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. Guys. So I was, uh, I was looking at these fittings here and instead of putting them straight, uh, you know, everybody will probably think that they will go like straight this way towards the catch can. So on the catch can here, so here, if you see, I have a 45 from the catch cam back and it kind of like it loops around it's not like a straight shot so it doesn't look like weird it kind of you know runs more like along the firewall so i'm thinking that if i if i point i'm sorry if i point these here at a at an angle you know this one can go like kind of like this 
to kind of keep that you know that flow back here into the front and then the top one the same thing a 45 a little higher into you know this one being at an angle as well that way kind of behind and they don't like they don't kind of like overlap each other you know kind of like if they would if they were you know on top of each other so that's what that's what i'm gonna go with i think it's uh it's a cleaner way to go all right guys so before finishing for tonight i wanted to show you guys how the how the lines came out kind of gave it a little angle over here like i said you know not straight back not straight to the side kind of just like a 90 pointing towards the side kind of letting letting each other tuck on each other and then the 45s to the catch can there i think that's the, the cleanest way what's going on everyone welcome back got a little update for you remember last time we we're here we had the the two 90s for the water neck for the water neck and the the radiator the upper radiator hose uh, shout out to um, Treadstone Performance down here in uh, South Florida. They actually had the, the 20 and uh, 90 and a 45 in stock. Let me show you the guys in the This is the 45 and this is the 90. If you remember last time, the 90s were a lot bigger. This is what I what I originally, when I ordered it on, online, what I thought it was, but it was a lot longer. And they they kind of... They kind of, you know, they were they were too big for, for for what I had in mind. If you ever done this before, the 20 end holes, I mean, you think it's bigger, it might be easier, but it's actually a lot, a lot harder. So uh, I'm gonna set up a time lapse so you guys could uh, could check it out so you can see it how precise and and you know how really uh how really um how really tight it is. Because remember, you have to tie both ends all the way to the end, and you can't have the holes too tight. Because remember, the engine flexes a little bit. And obviously, if you have it too long, the hole's kind of kinks in the middle, and you know it just just doesn't look good. The wrench that you actually need to tie those things on. I don't have the wrenches that, for their fittings. I know it's gonna get scratched a little bit. If I have to touch it up later, I will. Uh, so I'm gonna set up a time lapse so you guys can check out, you know, that how to how to screw down those uh, big 20 amp fittings. So yeah, guys, check it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this out again. I'm gonna sleeve. I'm gonna sleeve this on the on the holes, put it in, and we'll have one side done, and then we'll cut the holes to the measurement. And hopefully, we get it right the first time. All right, all right, guys. So you can see, sleeve is here. There's the other hand of the fitting. Put some grease in here. First thing is, put it in there, kind of help out with the grease, and hand tie it as much as you can. Now remember. It doesn't always have to go all the way to the end of the of the threads. But me being me, me, I'm sorry, me being me, I like it to kind of go all the way to the end. So that's where my OCD. So I get the towel as thick as you can. Put it on the vise and just go from there. <clears throat> all right guys i have it set up on the on the tripod so here here it is even on the vice you can see it got scratched always it was on a time lapse so you can see how hard i was putting all my body weight just to get this thing like sealed like these 20 look it's it's like very warm you can tell it was like stressing so i'll probably just end up kind of touching it up with, with paint um i probably want to do like a, a a darker black anyway this, this black is kind of it's kind of like a gloss black and i have everything more like a like a low gloss uh, black on the engine bay so but this is a this is the first step we're going to do now the hard part which is actually measuring um the water neck to the to the red to the radiator hose all right, all right so this 
Here's where it gets tricky. off the, the fitting so I can get an exact measurement of where it's going to travel all the way to once I get it in there. Be, let me get a piece of tape. I'll be right back. Like Alright, so what I'm actually going to do here is tape up more or less the area where we're going to cut around. This way even when we make the cut, the hole won't flare out as much and it'll be easy to put on the other side. So we have, we now have our measurement. So right here, we're gonna cut the holes right in the line and hopefully we'll get it on the first time because last time I did this with the other setup I had, it literally took three different tries, taking off and putting on the fittings and that kind of took half my day just to make this little holes. You know, it's, it's harder than, you know, it's, it looks nice and all, but it's kind of harder. That's why a lot of people, don't get it right or just give up or go with the with the 16 end and don't do the 20. The 20 end stuff is, is it's hard to it's hard to do. So yeah, hopefully we'll get on the first try. Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna be using a regular regular grinder. Something special here. And I was thinking I'm actually gonna give myself a little hair, a longer space so I could have more of a flex uh, when I and to put it in. And either way it's kind of at a small angle so I could you know move it around so I'm gonna give myself a little more space so all right guys so let's pay for the best So I will say this, if you don't trust yourself using the grinder too much, I wouldn't recommend doing it like that. I've done it like this plenty, plenty of times that I trust myself, which sometimes not a good thing, so that's how accidents happen. But if you're there with a the grinder, don't force it, because it's, it's gonna start kicking. So just let it eat away, and just kind of like work your way very slowly into it. Don't don't go in there like if you're gonna cut it, like if you know if you're actually cutting something, just let it grind away and just let it go in there by itself. If you try to go in there and force it, it's gonna start kicking on you. That's that's when you're gonna get a bad cut. But even like without even like a you know, without on a bench grinder or no exact line around, it's actually a pretty good uh pretty good cut for whatever. So. And the best thing is I ordered two two feet, so we gotta we gotta make it again. I have a spare just in case. So put on the spinning now hopefully like i said hopefully we get it right first it's the goal what's going on everyone welcome back so after posting the picture on instagram of the upper radiator holes with the 20 uh fittings um i got a couple dms you know everyone liked it and and then ryan pure function started asking me you know, uh, you know, uh, questions about the, the setup. And he's like, oh, hey, so, you know, I want to do the bottom too. So that kind of got me thinking. I was like, I originally didn't want to do the bottom because, you know, it, it doesn't show that much. 
So obviously, you know, after someone pointed out, you know, that it starts sticking out like a sore thumb. So guess what? We're on the way to Tridstone Performance to pick up some 20 end fittings to get the, the bottom uh, water neck welded and the bottom part of the radiator. So uh, we're gonna stop by Treadstone Performance. Uh, they have the, the fittings in stock. And then we're gonna stop by Eddie so I can have him uh, weld that on for me really quick. And I guess uh, we're doing the bottom uh, radiator holes too. So thank you, Ryan. Boy Pedro is hooking it up. These guys actually have a 20 end fitting in stock. So that's, that's actually pretty rare. I always have to order them online. Ooh, I'm gonna <laughs> there you go. Perfect. 20, 90, 45. Ricky Super here. Looking real good. Really clean on your site. So guys, I have Eddie welding up the, the water neck. We're using a, a non-turbo water neck. Um, with the uh, with a Michi motor radiator, I don't know if that that matters if anybody wants to do that in the future. Oh. All right. So yes, for anybody at home putting on that lower uh, water neck with a exhaust manifold installed on the car with everything around it is a pain in the ass this one it's okay with a with a wrench you could get to it pretty quick that one over there you're gonna need a swivel head kind of squeeze through down there and just you know kind of play with it till you get it to get it right on the bolts so here's what I to show you guys so the 90 yeah I'm trying to hold the trying to hold this here all right so you see how the 90 is installed and at an angle pointing down under the alternator. Let's see if I can turn it right here. Okay, let's see what I'm looking at. So it's kind of coming over here this way, like this through here. And then this 45 on the bottom of the bed, it's got to be at an angle kind of over there. So it's kind of making like a small U or a wide U, I'm sorry. Because if it, obviously, if it points down, it's going to hit the sway bar. If it holds up, it's gonna hit the 45. And I have a straight actually, and the straight it's just it, it's at an angle. It's kind of it's gonna go you know in the favor of the of the alternator. So it has to it has to be like a small use. The only way. I was looking at the factory holes, and it kind of travels under the radiator, the the alternator too. So it's not like you're changing anything dramatic around. So. Create your holes to the 90 and then we're gonna make the U here. We're gonna connect it. So I'm gonna start with the 90 first and one that once that's set we'll see exactly where we're gonna do the, the 45. Alright, check back in now. Alright guys, so I'm sorry for this on this uh, weird position but I kinda set the GoPro down there as a, a tripod so you guys can see more or less what I'm doing here so the 90 is already installed here if you see here it's on top of the sway bar and this is a 45 here let me take my hand out of the way it's pointing kind of you want it you want it to point down a little bit not a whole lot so it doesn't hit the sway bar and then here's the angle that we're going to give 
camera for you guys to see it down there. All right, guys. So first attempt, it's not good. Holes kinked a little bit. It's too long. You see, there's kinked, and back here, it's a little kinked as well. So I'm gonna take about a my finger off and try it again. It's too long. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. So I gave up on it last night. Kept on this morning. This is like my fifth try now. Of cutting and putting the holes back together. And it's still, it's it's okay back here. It's got a small kink, but you know, nothing major. But down here, it's pretty bad. So came to the conclusion that I can't use the 45. It's gonna have to be a 30, so I can get us a, a smoother. Uh, a smoother curve here and I don't have this kink because obviously the kink is made because of the angle that the fitting is in so yeah gonna have to wait till tomorrow Monday and go get a, a 30 degree angle see if, uh, if that fixes the problem but it's there you can see it clearly it's mostly done hey guys welcome back one quick thing I forgot to kind of point out, but a couple things I, I got. I've been focused on the on the bottom radiator hose. As you can see, I finally got the serpentine belt. Um, remember, anybody doing that that new Titan crank pulley, which is an ATI, but a Titan version, I re they redesigned it. You're able to use a stock serpentine belt, so you don't have to figure out the part number. I went back to the factory uh, serpentine belt. Also, uh, here we go with the, what is this, Reed uh, Engineering. The overflow can that I had chrome. This thing is, is perfect for what I was looking for. Last time I did the other one, the Mishimoto with the with the powerhouse racing cap. Uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't exactly too thrilled about it. And I know if I had to redo it, I was gonna get it redone. I, I wasn't I wasn't too I wasn't too excited about that one. But, but this one is it's just perfect. It's it's small. You know, it's not like over the top, not too long. It it, it clears my my uh, my charge pipe here. Uh, it's just a simple, you know, very, very nice piece. I love it. Shout out to them. Also from uh, Platinum Racing Products, their R35 uh, coil kit. I um, I had the black it chrome. You know, it's not crazy detail, but if you get close to it, you can actually see the chrome in there. And you know me, I like seeing angles and there's chrome in there. That's good with me. Uh, what else did we do? I did the powerhouse uh, shock tower caps. I had the I had the bottom piece already for anybody I noticed in the previous video, but I actually had the cap. I just I know I had to get the drill, uh, the cap drilled because my whole the the coilovers the, the stud was a little longer and it wouldn't clear. So you know minimal, but I had to uh, drill it out. So I had to uh, actually have my old man help me, and we got it pretty pretty exact on both sides. Uh, let's see what else is new here. Uh, I'm gonna install the wastegates now. They came back, the caps came back from chroming. I actually had the the body on the on the wastegates painted. You know they have that like that golden color from tile, but you know I had them for like over 10 years and they already are they're looking a little bit out of shape. So I painted them with a uh, with high temp uh, paint. I did about three coats on them. I'm gonna. It should dry up. Oh, there, it should be dry already. They, the last call was a couple hours ago. All right, guys. I wanted to show you how these things came out. Pretty happy how they came out. Look at that contrast between the chrome, black, and then if you notice up here, those bolts, how they're, uh, I guess, black, dark. They usually come like a silver color, but I went to the hardware store and I got them black just for that additional contrast. And look at them from the top. It should look really nice. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. I actually been wanting to uh, to finish this uh, this video, but uh, I don't know if you saw in the last clip we had the 45, <clears throat> and it kind of had the holes kinked in the, in the lower radiator, uh, in the bottom of the radiator um, to the water neck. So I had to order a 30 a 30 uh, bend or a, a 30 angle um, dash 20 which uh, Threadstone, the local shop here, didn't have in stock. So I finally got here today. Today's Sunday. Uh, it's taken about 10 days because of the whole um, 
the whole holiday season and you know how the whole shipment gets delayed and stuff so we've been waiting on that for quite a while also got these little four end fittings for the for the overflow can the injectors came back from from uh from fuel injection uh fuel uh, con injector connection um i had them down here at a local shop and they 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 kept on saying that they were bad that they couldn't you know they couldn't get them to to test right that they were flowing all over the place these guys uh took care of it. it took them about a week yeah a week and then you know it took like a couple of extra days to the whole you know the whole shipping thing but if you see here the the flow is actually you know we're all like five or six from each other so that's pretty good so i got the injectors back also uh the chroming got done got the lower plenum for the intake manifold had that installed already so uh, yeah this wasn't on the last clip so obviously you guys now see it's more complete the intake is finally on but runners you see look how nice it came out nice and chromed uh the fan shop for the powerhouse i'm sorry not uh Induction performance, I'm sorry. <laughs> the uh, straw came out, it's been sitting here, so it's kind of has some spots, but it's, well, I think it's, uh, it's pretty nice too. So so yeah, guys, the goal on for today is to finish the that bottom uh, the bottom uh, 20 end holes for the lower neck and the lower radiator, and that's gonna be for it. So uh, let's get to that and, and finish it up. Last clip, I share with you guys that I was waiting on that uh 30 uh a 30 degree bend fitting check out what happened to it don't know how i screwed it in how i normally do screw it in and i crossed the thread somehow so there goes that fitting so anyway after being a little frustrated and just kind of you know looking around for a little bit i realized that if i extend the water neck a little longer it could clear. Hold on a second. Let me, let me turn on my light. <clears throat> it could clear through back here through the through the alternator and the intercooler pipe, and then that way the line literally runs straight down to the to the inner, uh, to the bottom of the radiator here. So I took off the water neck again. Where my eddies? As you can see here, he extended it about like a quarter inch for me, a little longer. And I picked up a, another straight fitting at a stretch stone. So hopefully, hopefully this solves the issue. I'm literally just waiting on this. I have everything ready to go. Injectors are here. I even stopped by the dealer and picked up some coolant. Uh, I like using Toyota coolant, by the way. Uh, what else? I even, oh, look. I got this from uh, Ryan uh, from uh, Pure Function. I saw he said about that fitting that powerhouse racing sells uh, for the for the little holes for the power steering for the reservoir. This one right here to the to the rack. So I'm gonna be doing this too. Thank you, Ryan. And that's it. This is just the line for that dash six line, and this little dash four fittings are to finish my overflow overflow can uh, connection. So that's it. The car is literally just ready to go. So hopefully I, I get this uh this fitting ready and uh and everything bolts up so I'm gonna stop wasting time and get to it. And just like that, we gotta wait another night. Still too short. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another another uh try of this uh radiator lower hose. You can see here I got this uh piece over here extended even a little longer. Hopefully this one's it. It feels like it's probably like the seven or eight time that I I try either cutting holes or extending this this lower or this lower water neck piece. Hopefully it's enough to just uh, get the 90 in there in the right angle and, and get the holes. Um, car is done. You know the, now like, there's nothing left to be done. Just lower radiator holes. Pretty much put in fluid and she's ready to turn on. So. Um, Let's get this thing done and, and see if this is it. You know, I, I see now why nobody ever wants to deal with the with the lower with the lower water neck and, and powerhouse racing charges so much money to, to do it. I guess they went through all the trouble of doing all the R and D work, so hopefully this one's it. Alright. Well guys, 
you see a smile on my face that means we got good news finally got it right this thing has been beating my ass for freaking 10 days now so sorry i'm lining up here with that with the phone so if you can see there the fitting is finally screwed in all the way right put it over here so you can see with the light of the phone and the holes over here okay so you can see here i'm going to turn it this way so here okay so it's not rubbing on the alternator like i didn't want to and it's not rubbing on the intercooler pipe and here is the angle that we have which is pretty much perfect it's straight i can just have it this bend here not gonna touch over there not gonna touch over here and i'll just do it it's a straight over here that i already have so that means mission accomplished and for anybody asking the the alternator cable it has that thick sleeve from the from the zero gauge cable i'm sorry zero, uh, gauge four cable and i put that uh that dei uh fire uh whatever that sleeve or whatever you know protect it just in case it's not really touching anything but you know better to be safe than sorry so yeah finally we uh you know we're, we're getting to the end of this thing man this you know i i was all happy about it going in and at first and i don't know what, i don't know what to say it's <laughs> it hasn't been a fun experience i can tell you that much so um i mean would i rather pay you know I'm not even sure how much the kit costs, but I know it's pretty pricey for the top and the bottom. Probably not, I'll still do it myself, but for a regular person that doesn't have, well, I'm sorry, not a regular person, for any average Joe that doesn't have the right tools or or patience to do it, I would not recommend it. You know, just, just buy the kit if you really want it. If not, just leave the factory holes and leave it alone. All right, so from tip to the shortest point, Uh, it's about what is that five and like three quarters no five and a half right yeah five and a half five and a half on the on the shorter side of the of the water neck again remember this is a non-turbo water neck and a mishimoto radiator just in case anyone trying to do the same exact setup all right let's go ahead and get this water neck installed again all right guys Again, water neck is the installed. Total paint, yes, to install. Here's the finished holes. I try to get this fitting all the way to the end, touching, but when I'm telling you this thing is hard, fighting me, I, I couldn't go anymore. So, did as best as I could there. There's a 90 on the other side. I, obviously, you know, these get all scraped up if you don't have the right tool. You know, if you do, very nice, but I, you saw the way I did it, so I kind of touch them up with paint here. So here's a, for reference for anybody, how long the holes needs to be. I'm doing from the 90, 90 flat fitting. Try to get this as straight as possible, just for reference guys. It's about 14 inches, so you can have a general idea more or less uh, how long it needs to be. Yeah, let's go ahead and install it in the car now and uh, hopefully call it a night. All right guys, wanted to show you the final product. It's all bolted down. See the line right there, 90. Not touching anything tight, but not touching anything. Going straight down here, and then hooks up to the radiator there. Um, for the fitting down there, I had to use these uh, adjustable pliers to kind of get in there and squeeze. I, I touched the corner where there where I scratched the paint, but trust me, there was there was no other way to do it. Very, very hard. So, like I said, uh, I'll say it again. Anybody consider doing the, the bottom uh, 20 N uh think about it twice maybe even three times it's it's a pain in the ass so i don't know if it's worth it for anybody um i finally got it out of the way i'm gonna be radiators here now i'm gonna be installing the electric fans popping it back in there and we're done fans are right there just plugging them in and i'm done all right guys that's gonna be it for this video if you guys uh, enjoy the content of this video and my other videos uh, consider subscribing to the channel it really helps out it keeps me motivated keep making the videos and keep uh showing you the guys the, the progress on the on the super and, and so forth uh, like always guys thank you for the support like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace